you, Ralph, have this record of taking teams from there and lifting them all the way up to there. I mean, um, Hoffenheim from third division to the Bundesliga in two and a half years. Um, I'd be Leipzig from the fourth tier to the Champions League semi-finals in eight years. Can you really plan that kind of progress? I mean, it's I'm 100% convinced that you can plan uh, development, that you can plan performance. I would not go as far as to say that you can plan success for a specific date, but what you can definitely do, and by that, by doing that, you can indirectly influence and also plan success. What you can do is, is plan development and performance and increase the level of performance. Let's get into that a little bit as to how you set the, the groundwork for, for that, the framework for, for that kind of development as a football club. Yeah, when I started back in 2012 uh, as a sporting director for Red Bull Salzburg and for RB Leipzig, at the time, uh, both had pretty old squads. I think the average age of both of both squads was almost 30. Um, in Salzburg, they were winning the league, but they didn't have an exciting team. Um, the, um, the only player that they had sold for big, bigger money was Mark Janko at the time for six million. Um, but when I started there, I told my 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 my, my the people that assisted me, like for example Johann Sauer and your and Christoph Freund, I told them, listen, we need to create a squad that can not only win titles, but we also need to develop players, find, scout and develop players and selling them for double figures within two years. And uh, I remember Christoph Freund looking at me telling, are you serious? We are in Austria. I said, yes, but we just need to find the right players, have the right and best possible coaches and develop them. And in the end, it, it, this is exactly what happened. In every transfer window, we were trying to reduce the average age by finding players like Kevin Campbell, like Sadio Mane, like Nabi Keita, just to name a few of them. And in Leipzig, when we started like in 2012, Leipzig was in the fourth division. It was level four football. So this was the same what we did there. We were trying to find younger, young players who, when at the time we signed them, we also was, were convinced that he could play third or even second division football at the time we signed them. And in fact, what we did in both clubs at the time was club building. So in the first couple of months, I tried to analyze uh, um, yeah, the, the squad, the team, but also the people around the team, the staff. And we were trying to find the best possible people to develop the, the, the team. You've talked before about your fundamental pillars of success that you integrated into the Red Bull model. Could you explain them to us and how you go from developing them from, from theory to actual practice? I like to, to talk in this, in this case about the, the three C's in football that are highly important. Uh, the first one is uh, concept, the C for concept. Um, this means that we were trying to implement uh, a specific DNA into the club. Um, the headline of everything and the guideline was the style of football that we spoke about earlier on. Uh, and this consistent orientation towards it in all areas was where we put all emphasis on in, from, from day one. Uh, the playing style with a high recognition value, even on a bad day, you could still, you should still be able to recognize the kind of football that we wanted to play. By doing that, we create a corporate identity in the whole club, not only with regard to the players, but also with regard to the coaching staff. Even the fans, in the end, identified themselves with the style of football that we were playing. And this, for me, was a very decisive factor. Um, and in the end, as I said, it creates identification within the, the, the squad, the players, the staff, and, and, and the fans. Um, the second C is competence. As I said earlier on, we were trying to find the best possible people for each job. Um, for, by do, for doing that, it helped me a lot that, that I knew where the best possible people were. Uh, the network allowed me to, to, to identify those people and know these people already. And in the end, it was my job to convince them to, to, to go on a mutual journey together with us in both clubs. So um, again, here, the key is to have a competent and excellently trained staff. Uh, in every position, um, then we need to promote and challenge them. And on the other hand, we also need a constant benchmarking with the market leaders in other areas, in other leagues, 
um, uh, this was the second C. The third one, obviously, is capital and cash. Um, I believe that it enables us, it enabled us the implementation of the philosophy to start with, but it doesn't by no means replace concepts and competence. And therefore, for me, it, it has, you know, in a, in a way, a limited, it is a limited success factor. Um, concepts and competence, if you, if you use them in a consequent manner, normally they generate capital in the end.